here on the job having just arrived and about to get ready to go to work um but as soon as i rolled onto the job site this morning something caught my eye that stirred something within me that has been festering for years and years now an absolute hatred of barricade tape there's a barricade that has been put in front of every door on this building um this building is 850,000 square feet, very long. It's got, I don't know how many doors on this side facing this way, about one, two, seven doors facing that way. Uh, every wall on this building has at minimum half a dozen doors. Um, and it, every single one of them is barricaded off where you can't get through them because there's danger tape that's been taped up. As far as I'm aware, I can't go in the building at all because there's danger tape up everywhere. This kind of tape right here is so hideously misused on construction sites. It makes me so aggravated because this tape is sacred. This right here, whenever you see this in front of something, it means you're not supposed to go there wherever this tape may be blocking off because there's some sort of horrendous risk to you, your life and your limb and your everything that you believe in oh my goodness if you cross that danger tape you're gonna get a knuckle sandwich from something um and people use that as a weapon on a construction site um they, they don't understand the purpose of danger tape at, for at, at least in best case scenario they don't understand what it's for worst case they're using it to try to block off access to something that has no risk to it by itself um they're just trying to create their own little special space uh and using a, a threat of injury to enforce that and that sounds ridiculous but i've seen it happen um several different job sites in this case i think somebody's just stupid um because there's no way in hell with the ceiling being completed the the roof is done there's no more, like, there's no rafters being put up. There's no roofing nails being slammed through. There's no work at all overhead being done. All the way around the building, that would mean that every single door has to be danger taped. Um, so there's no, there's no reason. This is just somebody got happy with the danger tape roll. No way that the entire building's been blocked off on the inside. Um, and there's... There, there's no reason for that to be going on. But I've seen different situations where people have used danger tape to just block off their little personal area that they don't want anybody in. This is my special spot. No, no girls allowed. No parents allowed. That sort of thing. That's what they've done with it on s several different jobs. But let me contextualize. Like Danger tape does actually mean that you're going to get injured if you go into this area. Danger tape is intended to signify that there is some sort of hazard that has been identified by the person who's put up this danger tape present in this area that is an immediate risk to your life. Something like someone up above is suspending a load, um, like they're carrying something with a crane or they're uh, welding and there's a whole bunch of you know hot slag falling. Um, there's a laser that's being used somewhere in the vicinity that might blind you there's something nearby that is going to either kill you or severely injure you um caution tape is an alternative a yellow tape that means be careful whenever you're walking into this area the floor might be uneven uh floor might be slippery uh you know something that is not going to seriously injure you but will definitely ruin your day um, so don't cross this barricade unless you pay attention to exactly what's going on. You you keep your wits about you uh, as you're going through this area. Caution tape is never used, unfortunately. The yellow tape, people don't opt for that because that's less terrifying to see. Caution tape, and so people will use danger tape instead because, in all honesty, like whenever caution tape has been put up somewhere, people don't give it a second thought. They'll go under it, they'll go over it, sometimes they'll go straight through it, walk right through it, break it, whatever, um, because it doesn't have that urgency that danger tape does. But 
that is just entirely the fault of construction workers for not being properly versed on what tape's supposed to mean. Um, because it goes both ways. Both the people that put up tape are clueless as to what the tape they're putting up is actually supposed to represent, as well as the people that just go slamming through it without a care in the world, not paying attention to the possible hazards represented by this tape being in the way. But in a case like this, where every every door is danger taped, they probably could have used caution tape. I don't know what's going on out here that's made them put up danger tape. I guarantee caution tape was the right option because it's probably something as mundane as like there's water in the building because it rained and you know we got all these open doors and windows that haven't had glass put in or doors put up so there's probably water and you probably need to be careful going in there. Um, that was probably what was supposed to have been done. Uh, maybe it was a situation where they just didn't have any caution tape. So we'll just slap up danger tape, but that's not not appropriate. You need to have the correct tape. <laughs> I've got a roll of caution tape and a roll of danger tape in the bed of my truck for just this sort of situation. Um, because you need to make sure that your signage and your notifications that you're putting up to alert the workers that are around you are correct and are not misleading. <sighs> Anyways, the, the job that I was on um, that stands fresh in my mind, that demonstrates just how abusive people are towards barricade tape was in Spartanburg five years ago, six probably. Um, there's a car factory. And whenever we went in there to do our little electrical work in the research and development area that we were wiring up, we were told danger tape and caution tape we, we, we don't, we don't play by the usual construction playbook of if you see tape, go slamming through it. Caution tape has meaning out here. Danger tape has meaning out here. We're going to go by what we're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, the OSHA standards for, uh, for notification and signage. And we're going to make sure that, you know, danger tape is used whenever there's actually danger present. We're going to use caution tape whenever you just need to be mindful and, you know, keep your wits about you. And so pay attention whenever you see caution tape. Don't go through whenever you see danger tape. Ask whoever it was that put it up. There should be a sign hanging on the danger tape somewhere or, you know, stuck to a uh, support and column somewhere near where the danger tape is barricaded off to tell you what the hazards are, who to call for access, that sort of thing. That was probably the best job site that I've been on in terms of people actually observing and respecting and abiding by the rules of barricades and signage. And so, you know, a couple of weeks go by and everything's pretty decent for a while until we realize that uh, people are starting to use danger tape in ways that it's not supposed to be used. We have our work area uh, all around the building. There's you know, people working over here on this side of the job and over there and then up in the second floor and in that room back there. We're all spread out really hard, but we all have a common point that we come back to to get material to sign in for PPE, for MSDS, all that sort of thing. Is all at one spot in the building where we have our toolboxes and we have our sign-in table, all that sort of stuff. We always come back to this one spot. We have to go back to that one spot. All of our stuff is there in the middle of this big old open floor space. Um, you can see it from anywhere in the building. You could walk right to it, and then it got danger taped. And it wasn't by us. Um, the pipe fitters, I believe it was. It was either the pipe fitters or it was the sprinkler guys. Those are not those are not one of the same. Um, the the these people had put a danger tape barricade all the way around our area. We had no idea which one of them it was. Um, they did not hang a sign next to the danger tape to indicate why they had put that up. But our spot that we had all of our tools and material in was completely encapsulated by danger tape. Um, we never got an explanation. As far as I'm aware, uh, that stuff got taken down pretty quick. But it was completely uh, completely inaccessible there for a, a good long while throughout an afternoon as we tried to figure out why is this danger tape here? What are they actually working on? 
it got taken down. We never thought anything of it. We thought, okay, maybe uh, maybe one of them was just being goofy, you know. Maybe it was just you know it was all a joke, trying to uh, <clears throat> trying to trying to spice things up on the job site. But then, the same company wound up barricading off the entrance to the building. And this time it wasn't all for jokes. This time it wasn't taken off, you know, without a care in the world. No, this time they were serious. The 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 way in and out of the building was danger taped off. Now, mind you, there's a thousand different entrances into this job site, um, but only one faced where our material was being delivered in at, where the parking lot was. The main way to get in and out of the building that everybody was using because every other route you had to go way around um, was there barricaded off. The only other ways to get out of the building um, had no loading dock, had no poured concrete, so everything's mud and slop, um, and was usually separated by a fence because this place had a security fence up around it with like the, the silk uh, privacy screen that's hanging from it, so you have to climb over the fence, cut through it, whatever it is, there's there's no way to get to the parking lot without some sort of ridiculous barricade or barrier being in the way. And they danger taped it off, and so now everybody's kind of either stuck in the building or having to go way around. And with deliveries coming in that have big old heavy pallets of material on it that, God forbid, you have to try and carry that in by hand, through uneven muddy terrain, you know, we're, we're kind of screwed, but they absolutely had to have it up for this entire big walk space. Uh, a wall segment, probably 80 feet across with three different doors going out. Couldn't go that way. Had to, had to, had to go all the way around through a single wide little man door and Hope to goodness that we could somehow manage to get all of the material trudged across that muddy path with nobody turning an ankle or falling into a bottomless chasm of a water puddle. And the GC, thankfully, they they uh, they understood how ridiculous this was, but they, I mean, what were they going to do? You know, we, we, they they've got to work here. Hopefully, they get it done quickly. We'll just we'll just leave them alone and hope that they get it done within a reasonable amount of time so that people can actually start getting their deliveries in and eventually go home for goodness sake, because yeah, we, we've got to, we've got to have people being able to get to their vehicles, which are all parked in a lot. It took them almost a week and a half to get done with that spot and get that barricade tape taken down. Um, and if you walked through it, oh my goodness, we're calling the law. Oh, John, the general contractor going to hear about this one. I, I saw several people, actually, that uh, that went through there and that uh, wound up being run off the job because there's this barricade tape in the way. Uh, oh, my goodness. There's no reason for this to be here. I'm aggravated. I'm going to show my ass. I'm going to walk right through this barricade tape. Screw, you know, screw, screw the rules. I'm going to do what I want to do. Got run off the job for it, for failure to observe the danger signage. Actually, uh, my superintendent, the last day that we were out there, uh, that barricade tape was still up and he went plowing through it and cut it on his way through. Um, <laughs> this was, uh, it was a job where we'd been sent out there for a couple weeks. That's why we were leaving. I was sent out there with a superintendent who wasn't actually the superintendent of the job. They were just putting us, him and his crew out there for a couple weeks while our job site back in, uh, back here in Georgia was getting cranked up good and ready for us to come back. So yeah, the last day that we were out there, he, he destroyed it. He went right through it. Everybody yelling at him, throwing tools at him. <laughs> he walked through patting his behind at him. He, he didn't care. There was no reason for that danger tape to be blocking all three of the exit doors. No reason for it to have taken that long. Oh my goodness. He was, he, he was going to show everybody. Uh, still a very, very risky maneuver. Cause I mean, even though it was extremely inconvenient, what if it actually, you know, what if it was not just an attempt to uh, flex on all of the other contractors that were out there? What if this danger tape actually did have a serious purpose that they were not communicating properly? And, you know, as soon as he walked through, he got injured somehow, like, I don't know, pipe falling on him. Or... It, it was, it's not advisable, even whenever danger tape has been put up or a barricade has been put up in a way that is absolutely stupid and obstructionary, then, you know, you, you can't, you can't just go blasting through it. 
but it was still funny. Um, and then an example of barricading that has boggled my mind for years now as to what exactly the decision-making process was for putting it up was the liquefaction plant job that I've talked about a couple of times as being the lowest point in my adult life. I absolutely hated that job. The heat exhaustion, the, the wrath that everybody was showing against their fellow man, the, the full body flame retardant body suits that we had to have on all the time that we were out there because, you know, it's a hazardous location. We've all got to have flame retardant suits on and yeah, 110 degree heat index, uh, sometimes trickling up to 120 made that absolutely miserable. But maybe that was what, maybe the heat was what got to the person who decided uh, to put up a danger barricade using duct tape um, in such a way that made the barricade tape a hazard in and of itself. They didn't have red tape. Um, the, the general contractor that was out there did not have red tape on hand. They'd already used a lot of it for an excavation that was needing to be done. So they had to come up with some way of barricading off these holes that were in the slab of the plant management office that we were wiring up. Every one of these supporting columns has a hole at the bottom of it, which people refer to as a diamond. Um, whenever a supporting column is put in, they will be put on a footer or uh, something that got driven in with a, like a pile driver. And they're bolted in on all four corners of the supporting column so that... I don't know who that is. Anyways, so that the uh, the concrete is then poured over and make the slab hole all the way up to the column. It's hard to describe without showing a picture of it, but basically at the foot of every column, there's a spot that has to be poured um, to make it even with the rest of the slab that's already been poured around it. Um, so there's a giant hole, a gaping hole, until they pour concrete. There was The concrete was several weeks out. Don't know when they're going to be able to come back and pour. The end of my nose is really itching. Don't know whenever they're going to be able to come back in and pour the holes at the bottom of these columns. So we're going to barricade this off with duct tape, which is gray. And concrete is gray. Duct tape and concrete are almost the same color. Duct tape has a bit more of a sheen to it. Um, so maybe, may, maybe if we write danger in Sharpie, big black letters danger on the, the duct tape that we're taping over the hole with. Uh, nobody, will, uh, no, nobody will miss it. So the general contractor went to every column in this building, and the hole at the bottom of the column, they covered with duct tape. So that you almost can't tell that there's a hole there. It looks like straight flat floor all the way up to the column except that somebody wrote danger, hole, on the duct tape. And it wasn't with, you know, a, a, a large nib, a marker either. No, this was, this was just a normal old Sharpie. One of these right here. And sure, they tried to scribble around a little bit and make the, the letters wider. <laughs> but they just basically set a, a booby trap at the bottom of every column. They disguised the hole so that it looked like floor. And the w one of the helpers that we had out there, a uh, good friend of mine, probably the only friend I've actually made and kept with this company, he, uh, he needed to get to something that was right up against a column. And so he put an eight-foot ladder up, at the, uh, up against this column with one of the legs sitting on the duct tape, which was holding because the leg wasn't exerting too much pressure until he stepped up onto the ladder, which was three-legged because the duct tape, and he climbed up to about the fifth step, and that duct tape, <laughs> which surprisingly held until he got to the fifth step of the ladder, finally turned loose, and down he fell. And he wasn't, I mean, he, he was not as skinny as I am. I, I'm, I'm 145 pounds if I'm holding a 40-pound weight. He, uh, he, he was a, a good bit larger than I am. Whenever he came down, he came down hard, and he came down right onto a pile of material, wound up having to go to the doctor. 
And they called that danger tape into question very quickly. Was a red barricade tape? Maybe somebody would have noticed it, but because it was, because it was duct tape, the same color as the floor and effectively laying a snare for this poor man, they got into hot water as they damn well should have. The correct thing to do in that sort of a situation, if you're trying to barricade off a hole, is that you need to have the barricade set six feet away from the hole in the ground. At least that's... At least that's the OSHA standard, to my knowledge. There is a general contractor walking right up next to this truck. Is he about to ask me something? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was going to ask me to move my truck. I, I get moved so often. People always tell me to park in a different spot. The, the first time I pull up onto a job, it could be the first time that I'm pulling up out here ever, or it could be the first time this week. If I pull up onto a job, somebody's going to say, Hey, man, we need you to move your truck right around to the other side. We got to do <laughs> right there where you parked at. If you don't mind, I mean, I've been parking here for about a month now, and somebody, somebody at some point is going to have an issue with me parking here. It's already happened once. There's a dumpster that sits about 40 feet that direction, um, you know, on the other side of the lake. <laughs> there didn't used to be a lake there, but it rained last night, and this job site holds water so bad. But that dumpster uh, was the reason that I had to move my truck last week. Because the dude who was coming to pick up that dumpster uh, didn't like that my truck was sitting here. <clears throat> because it meant that he had to turn his wheel slightly to the left in order to back up to that dumpster. So I had to move my truck. That way he could go straight in and then straight back out and straight in again. And I think people, I think people get off to asking people to move their vehicles where they're parked. As for the, uh, as for the danger tape, though. Danger tape, uh, to my understanding, and I've I've got the OSHA 30. I've studied a little bit more than the average construction worker has uh, for the safety requirements and the safety procedures and safety standards and all that sort of thing. Danger tape needs to be set minimum of six feet away from a hole. If you've got a hole, either you cover it with something that can support twice the weight of the heaviest person on the job, and then right hole on top of the uh, on top of the covering usually some kind of plywood or something to that effect as long as like you find out who the heaviest person on the job is and then how much do they weigh times two and then you make sure that you know this board is able to sustain that much weight and then you write hole on top of it but failing that if you've got barricade tape you barricade six feet away from the hole on all sides so if you've got a square hole you've got a square barricade that is six feet away from the hole and the reason for that is the average person is six foot tall. And so if they get to the barricade tape and then fall down, they will not fall in the hole. Um, so for each of those columns that they had the holes at, the liquid uh, liquid uh, plant, they, uh, they would have needed to have barricaded six feet away from the hole, every one of those holes. They didn't have barricade tape. They had duct tape. So rather than driving uh, three miles to CED to be able to pick up Danger tape. Well, I'll just stretch out some duct tape over these holes. Write danger on it and, you know, basically ink pen. Sure, sure, nobody will miss that. So, uh, yeah, pe people don't understand danger tape. People don't understand the importance of making sure your signage is accurate and unmistakable. And for the purpose that it is intended. And not abusing the power to divert people around using barricade tape. Um, there's a couple of other jobs where I've seen people using danger tape just to keep people out of something. The, the most mundane example being there was a, uh, I want to say it was the theater that we were doing in Savannah where the carpenters, I think it was, had their room with a piece of danger tape over the front door because there's only one way into this room. It was like a service closet that they had set up shop in. They put all their toolboxes in and they just put danger tape over the front of the door so that you know people stay out of that room, but it's just the room that they keep their toolboxes and coolers in. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, well, they're not supposed to cross danger tape. The general contractor said so. <laughs> and see, <he, coughs> 
<laughs> I can understand wanting to keep people out of your room. Um, but that kind of stuff just keeps an honest man honest. You're not gonna, you're not gonna dissuade somebody with nefarious intent from going into your room and trying to take something. If that's what you're concerned about, if you're if you're worried about somebody going into your little room and stealing your cooler, well, the danger tape is probably not going to dissuade them from doing so. Just a little bit goofy. There was no hazard present in that area besides the angry, you know carpenter that would want to bonk you with a two by four or whatever if you came in the room trying to get his drill but it was just kind of goofy uh danger tape is not a joke if you see danger tape on a construction site barricading off anything be mindful of what it's there for uh figure out who it was that put it up and ask them why the hell it's there before you go slamming through it if it looks old and dilapidated if it's you know hanging down at the corners or if it's uh, dragging the ground and has mud over it and it's obviously been there for a hot minute figure out who it was before you take it down because that kind of stuff is very important um, I have a specific example of a person who died about three years ago now for failing to observe a barricade did not happen with my company, did not happen on the job site that I'm on, but happened at my father's company. But I'm not going to be a sick fuck and go into the details of it. It was, it, it's a situation where if somebody notices that there's a hazard, you're blessed if they actually put up a barricade tape to warn you about it, because the average person is lazy as hell. The same motivation that drives people to walk right through a barricade tape and not give any heed to the reason that's there just because it's the shortest path between two points is straight through the barricade tape will also motivate people to not put up tape at all and to not barricade a danger um you got somebody that's up in a boom lift welding two joists together or whatever the hell it is that welders do um you know they're dropping slag all the time there's a possibility they might drop something out of their boom lift if they put up danger tape underneath their lift be glad that person gives half of a shit about the people that are walking under the lift. Because he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't have to do that. Maybe he does, but most people don't. And so that's why I'm, I'm happy that they've got barricade tape up out here. Because at some point, somebody identified something that was hazardous. Whether or not it was actually warranting danger tape. And whether or not it actually meant that there needed to be some at every single door on this building. At least they tried. At least they took some time to notify others that there is a hazard here. Somehow. May raise a whole lot of questions as to exactly what the motivation was to put it everywhere, where you basically can't go in the building without you know, breaching a barricade. But better to have too many signs all saying don't come in here than to not have any at all and walk in there and get injured somehow. That's how I see it. But it is 6.57. I've got about three minutes before it's time to get out there and get cracking at it. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Where's the X button on this? Oh, it's up there in the corner of the screen. Okay. <clears throat> I've got my phone rotated a different way than usual. You'll have a hilarious day.